Hey guys, so this is not a new idea, but you know what? Some of these golden oldies are the best. Bottle cap pies. <laughs> They're so easy to make. And I think what really makes them easy to make is the shape of the actual bottle cap just makes a perfect pie crust. So um, I do have cutters, but if you don't have cutters, you can just uh, roll out a piece and just do it the way you would do a normal pie. So just kind of cut a rough circle and then use the edge of the um, bottle cap to break the dough off. So this is Fimo or polymer clay, and I'm using a very light uh, tan brown that I purchased. So I didn't mix this color, it came like this. And so I'm just rolling it out fairly thin, but not really, really thin, thin, thin. And because uh, you don't want it so thin when you make the edge of the crust that it's going to leave bald spots in the pie. So um, so I'm just cutting it with I've got a bunch of circle cutters that I got at our local Michael's craft shop. But if you don't, as I say, if you don't have that, it's not a big deal. And I'm actually cutting out the center of it um, because I don't have very much of this clay, so I don't want to waste it. So, um, and of course, nobody's going to know what's in the center because nobody's really going to eat this pie. So I'm just kind of laying it in like this, you can see. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the pie crust. So then what you do is, is you kind of just take your fingers and you go around the edge and you give it a little bit of a pinch. Now you don't want to pinch it too hard because you don't want to thin that uh, Fimo out so much that you're going to be able to see the bottle cap through it but you just kind of pinch all the way around the edge and uh, that'll give it that realistic pie kind of look. So yeah, it works out really well, actually. So you can see here, this one here, I made a little bit thicker. So I'm just kind of pinching it nice and slow all the way around the edge, just to make sure you got a good even edge. And leave it like if it kind of overhangs a little bit, that's fine, because that's what a homemade pie really looks like, right? So you don't want it to look like a store-bought pie, because you want your dolls to look like very domesticated. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going around the edge and uh, you can see here I've got a little excess. So I just kind of pull it off just like the way you would if you were normally baking a pie. So yeah, it's super, super easy to do. And that the way the edge of the bottle cap is, is what gives it that really super natural shape. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely perfect. Now my friend Pat said that Michael's um, had some miniature, like smaller bottle caps. So these are just standard pop or beer uh, caps. Um, but she said they had some that were half this size at uh, Michael's. I went to Michael's and I wasn't able to find any. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm just taking the end of a paintbrush and you know when you bake a pie and you use your thumb to go all the way around the edge to give it that little, uh, um, I don't know what the word is, that thumbprint all the way around the edge of the pie. Well, of course, my thumbs are way too big to do it on a pie this size, so I'm using the end of the paintbrush to do that. So, and it just gives the look that uh, the the little lady of the house pressed her thumb into the edge of every single one of these pies. <laughs> so, I mean, this is really, really super easy. It's not hard to do. And Fimo is pretty forgivable too. I mean, if you don't like the way it looks, take it out of the little pie shell and uh, roll it a second time. See how it looks here close up? That looks like a real pie shell in my opinion. So perfect. Okay, so now um, I'm making cherry pie, but the Fimo that I have is way too red and unrealistic looking. So, um, and with Fimo, of course, it comes out of the package pretty hard. So you got to use the heat of your hand to warm it up. And I'm just adding just a, I would say eight, nine parts red to one part uh, black. 
and I'm just going to mix it in. So um, there you go. So I've mixed the two together and that probably took me a good five minutes to mix, mix it smoothly. Now do you see the difference in the color? So it's more of a burgundy color which is closer to what a baked cherry pie would actually look like. Now here's the time consuming part of it. You have to take little tiny pieces and roll them between your hands and uh, make a million little cherries. Now I take some of that and I actually squish it into the bottom so I don't have to make as many cherries. And I only bake these for two minutes at 175 degrees and I have pre-baked all my little cherry pieces. So I'm just taking them out of my um, baking pan that I only use to do Fimo and that's a really super old baking pan and it's a pie plate ha huh? <laughs> there you go so I'm just uh, putting them into a little container I apologize that my container is also red but that's what I have so um, so now what I'm doing is is I'm taking some oil pastels and I'm just kind of sh uh, shredding it with uh, a little um, exacto knife and uh, I'm just kind of um, I, what I'm doing is is I'm going to be adding some liquid Fimo to this and uh, I really want to make sure that it has a nice red color to it because um, I don't want the juice of the pie to look like it's water I want it to look like it's actually um, the juice from the cherries so I'm just um, kind of just grating a little bit of uh, red oil pastel into the container and uh, I'm going to add a fair amount because I want it to be quite deep and rich looking so um, and, and I'm doing it slowly because I don't want any um, big chunks in there I want it to be quite fine and I also think that that red might be a little bit too bright so I'm also going to add a little bit of this deep purple. Not very much of the deep purple, just kind of a, eh, just a, just a little tad. There you go. So you can see the purple inside of the dish. And then this is the liquid Sculpty, or um, you can buy all different brands of liquid polymer clay, but this particular one is clear liquid Sculpty. So make sure when you're doing this that you're using the clear liquid and not the white. Now it does look white when it comes out of the container, but when you bake it, it actually turns clear. So I'm adding quite a bit of uh, liquid Sculpty or liquid Fimo into it and um, just going to mix it up and you'll see right away that it's not going to be white for very long. <laughs> so, um, so I've added uh, a little bit. That's not quite enough. You'll see I have to add a little bit more. So I've got here a little tool and it's one of those sculpting tools for doing sculpting. Um, clay sculptures so and that's perfect um, so I'm just kind of mixing it together and you can see that it's no longer white it's got kind of a pinkish kind of color to it and I don't have quite enough so I want to add a fair amount to it because then I don't have to use quite as many of the little cherry balls that I had to make and that was a little bit time consuming. It took me about a half an hour to roll all those tiny little balls. So um, I'm just going to add just a little bit more red to it um, just to make sure that uh, it's red enough. And yeah, like this is super easy. Like anybody could do this. And wait till you guys see the results. Like when this is done, I mean, these really do look like you could eat them I mean they're so they're so easy to make I mean really I think a lot of uh, people that start off doing dollhouse stuff they get super intimidated by polymer clay projects and really I mean it's the way I look at it is is if you mess it up before you bake it um, you could just roll it back into a ball and start again so it's um you can play with it for as long as you want. And sometimes it gets a little bit overheated in your hands. 
And uh, so just walk away from it for an hour and start again. So I find that when it gets overheated because your hands are too warm, sometimes it's not as easy to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, not everything that I make out of polymer clay turns out right the first time. I quite often will scrap it and start again. So, and uh, I very rarely waste any of it because I'll just roll it up and reuse it. So um, I'm just filling my little pie shells. And do you see here now why I put the um, ball of clay in the bottom of each one of those pies? So that way I don't need quite so many of those little tiny cherries. So, I mean, it's perfect. Uh, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the clear liquid stuff and uh, mix it up just so that the this this will stretch and do all four of the pies that I made. So, yeah, super easy. And I know it looks weird. It looks like it's, oh, totally the wrong color, but uh, it's not. When, you're, when this is finished and it's baked, it's going to look perfect. So... Um, just filling the last pie shell there and voila see how easy that is like not hard at all so I'm just gonna make sure I don't waste any of it and uh, use every last drop of it so I'm just using the last two or three cherries <laughs> uh, and it's easy to wash this too um, very hot water and uh, it washes out of the dish quite easily. So there you go. There, all four of them are filled, but I want to use my little tool here to kind of spread it around so it looks a little bit more realistic. And uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Not too bad. So yeah, you just got to make sure that uh, You've got your pie filled nicely. You don't want all of the pie filling to be all on one side of the pie. You want to just kind of make it look as even as you possibly can. So there you go. I've got all four of them filled, but I am not done yet. So here's where the touch of realism comes in. Um, so what I've got is, is uh, I think it was Bentley House that I learned this trick from, but I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Bentley House. Um, so I want to dust the edges of the pie to make them look like they're nicely browned and baked. So I'm taking again a couple more oil pastels and I'm just rubbing them onto this little piece of sandpaper. And then I've got my little paintbrush and I'm just going to lightly dust around the edge of these pies so that it looks like they were indeed baked in the oven and nicely browned. So, um, yeah, that really does add the touch of realism to it. And I know you can't really tell um, um, from my filming. I don't think my light is quite good enough, but uh, you'll be able to see at the end how nice this looks. So, and that's exactly the way a pie would look if it were baked in the oven. I mean, they're so realistic. Um, and, and they really do add that sense of realism to any dollhouse scene. Um, look great on a kitchen table or cooling near the window on the counter. I just think they're really sweet. I kind of like to go um, at the pastel with the lighter color first and then go over it with the darker color around the very edge so that it looks like maybe it might be a little tiny bit burnt on the edge. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the way these have turned out. They, they look pretty good. So, um, and once again, um, that uh, liquid Sculpty that's on it, the clear liquid, it really doesn't look very clear right now. But uh, after it's baked, it really, it really does look quite realistic. I'm quite serious when I say this is so easy to do. Um, I mean, seriously, this is a, a craft that uh, even a youngster could do. I mean, it's um, probably the easiest but most realistic looking 
um, Fimo trick there is out there. So, And it all has to do with the shape of that bottle cap because the bottle cap itself is just giving the perfect presentation for it. I mean, I guess the pie doesn't look that realistic if you turn it upside down, but who turns the pie upside down anyways? So, I mean, I think, I think they're really great. Uh, I'm always super, super happy to do these up. And I mean, it's easy enough to uh, change it up. I mean, you could just add some yellow and the clear Sculpty and make lemon. And then after it's baked out, you can use the white liquid Sculpty to do meringue, to do lemon meringue. Okay, so there you go. Now it's been baked and uh, um, I've baked it in the oven at 175, I think, for 14 minutes. Um, now the Sculpty itself is not particular, particularly shiny. So I find that when I've used the... Um, the clear Fimo brand one, it actually turns out a little bit more shiny. So what I've done is, is I've just got, gotten out my DuraClear gloss varnish and I prefer um, varnish on this rather than Mod Podge. Uh, Mod Podge tends to stay sticky on top of uh, Fimo, so you really do want to use varnish for this and I'm just painting over and making sure that I'm not getting the crust and I'm only getting the pie filling and I'm just putting some varnish on it so that uh, it makes the filling look um, um, wet. So because I mean cherry pie wouldn't wouldn't be flat colored like this. It would be it would look wet. So um, and this uh, varnish dries fairly quickly too as well. I mean this will be completely dry within about an hour and a half. So. So I'm just quickly uh, kind of covering the pie filling and making sure that I don't miss any spots because uh, um, that wouldn't be very realistic looking. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the outcome of these. So here's a close up. Um, the varnish is still wet, so you can see it's a little bit cloudy, but once it dries, it'll be completely clear. Now, don't those look like real pies? Like, holy Hannah, hey? <laughs> um, so much fun to make. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to help support my channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. Just go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash Lisa Dobo. I'd like to thank everyone that has bought me a coffee. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, hit that like button, and share this video with your friends. I hope you guys all try making these pies because they're so much fun to do. And if you can't find any of these uh, bottle caps, try going to um, a store that sells beer making supplies. That's where I found mine and have the best day ever, guys.